With the advantage of shooting at the ultra-fast speed of F2 with the Hyperstar, you run into many disadvantages, like cables being in front of your camera, no access to a filter drawer, or no ability to use a filter wheel at all. In today's video, we're going to attempt to solve some of these problems using my 3D printer and some custom CAD designs. So, as you can see here, this is my final product that I've put together. And uh, today we're gonna talk about everything that I went through to design these parts. I designed a 3D printed dew shield. I designed a 3D printed cable system here, as well as a 3D printed cable rings that go around the camera. These upgrades that I've made to the telescope are going to bring huge advantages to my pictures. No longer will I have smeared stars. Now I'm going to have perfectly sharp images that have nice, beautiful, straight diffraction spikes that come off at perfectly right angles. And also, my cables here will be hidden fully behind the diffraction spikes as well. So let's wind things back about three days and I'll take you on this journey on how I made all of this stuff so you can do it yourself. Some improvements that you can see that I needed to make for my old system was you can see this loop here of a plastic thing that I printed. This was to help spread out the diffraction spikes, but honestly I found that this just made my stars a bit blurry and made it hard to autofocus. Another problem that I had was no access to the filter drawer. You can see this silver knob that I'm pointing to. That is the filter drawer that I have on the front of my telescope, and I actually have to remove my dew shield. So I wanted to add a window into my filter drawer, which I could access and pull in and out by my hand. But first things first, we've got to print the diffraction spike mask that's going to hold the cable. So let's go do that. I grabbed some measurements off my telescope and now I'm going to work on a 3D design. I'm also drawing partial inspiration from a print that I found online already. I'm using some of the measurements that he got, but I found that this one that I printed from him just did not fit my telescope. It didn't even fit on properly, so I'm going to start from scratch. So I'm about partway done. I've been modeling from his old one I put into here, uh, and it looks pretty similar so far, but once I'm really done with it, you're going to be able to see that it is uh, a little different from this one, mainly because this one just doesn't fit. Um, and I don't know how to modify these files, so I just got to start on my own. To help improve the strength of the part, I added lots of fillets around here as well as on the inside of the channels. I found that my previous version, uh, this is uh, where it broke. Or not my previous version, but the previous version someone else designed. All right, so V1 came off the printer and I slapped it right on the telescope and it works perfectly. Uh, the telescope seats into the screws right here quite well and uh, it holds this cable quite nicely, although I don't like how this cable goes out on the top. So I'm gonna put in a channel right here. That also comes out on the top here. And then um, the USB cable was supposed to go right here. And unfortunately it could not fit inside this hole that I made. So I made this, I'm gonna make this slightly wider and both of them are gonna come out up here at the top. So here's the cable slice. And then I made this one slightly wider here. And then I added this top area where this cable can come out here. And this other cable that comes around the side will come out all through the back here. Here it is in Orca Slicer. And here it is on the Sobel printer. We've got about an hour and a half left for this print. It's uh, pretty quick when uh, you print with a fast printer right uh, like this and I'm just using some really old PLA that I'm going to be replacing soon with some J.O. filament. I have uh, pet G in here that I'm going to use for the final product and <clears throat> for more testing uh, prototype I'm going to be using this J.O. filament. It's nice and cheap and gets the job done um, for the price point so um, that's what I'm going to be using in the future once I run out of my really old 10 year old filament that I'm only using this stuff for prototyping. I also have a stack over here of old filament. But once I get rid of this, I'm just going to use uh, JOPLA+. But as you can see, we've got about an hour and a half to go before this print is done. And if this one works successfully, then we will swap over to Black Pet G and we will print this out in the final product once we know that 
all the new changes are working perfectly as intended. All right, new version is done. All right, and looking at V2, it is much better. The cable right here now goes in through this slot and around the back here, where because it's got a little bit of a slope to it on the back here as well. So then the cable comes out here. And then my USB cable is still just a little bit too thick for this, so I'm going to widen the width of this channel right here by about another millimeter or so to account for this cable. I measured the thickness of this cable this time at 5.3 mil, and I think this is uh, not that, so <laughs> I think I probably have to widen it by another half millimeter or maybe millimeter or so. But anyways, this is pretty much perfect, so I'm gonna make that one final change for the width between those, and I'm going to print the final part now and see how it comes along. And I've also been thinking I might print a collar here for this that slips around and uh, has two little spots for the, the cable. So the, um, the cable, these will be rings that slip on here and hold these tight, kind of like uh, these straps here, but they have specific spots at 90 degrees to hold the cables tight, so they are directly in line with these always. And I'm gonna print them in black petchy as well. Are you finding this video useful? Please leave a like or a subscription if you're really feeling it to show your support. It really means a lot. The final version is on the printer, printing in black pet G, looking very nice so far. I also quickly designed some cable loops to help hold on my cables. You can see I've got one for the cable here and for the cable here, and they're both at right angles, so they will be in line with the diffraction spikes. Brought the cable clamps into the slicer. Looks like it's only gonna be a six minute print. Nice and easy. And while I've been designing that part, this is finally almost finished. The cable router and diffraction spike mask. I realize now that I could have made uh, the ones that don't contain cables, I could have made those ones way thinner and probably had slightly smaller spikes, but eh, it's not the end of the world. I might do another version of this later. So we'll try this out here in just a sec. All right, and here is the final version printed. I got the big cable that fits right here, and I got the smaller one that fits right here. Also, I quickly went and printed the collar. It only took about five minutes, and that cable collar looks fantastic. I'm gonna print another one to go up here and I think it's going to be much better at keeping the cables right in line with the diffraction spikes. So keeping everything nice and tidy. And with two collars, it is absolutely perfect. The cables are now perfectly in line. As you can see, going up with this, they line up perfectly. So I will have nothing but diffraction spikes. And I cut a strip into my dew shield here and flipped it upside down. So now I can seat it right on here. And that'll get the job done. Let the cables pass through. That works for now while I print a dew shield. Here is the dew shield and even printing it at 200 millimeters a second in PLA plus, it's going to take three hours and 15 minutes so this is going to take a little while so let's test out the diffraction spike mask well it's safe to say that the diffraction spike mask and cable router is a huge success no longer do i have blurb stars that show weird aberrations even when they're bright and in focus in the center but now i have a nice sharp cross that really tells me you are in focus and yeah i do know my edges aren't perfect it's kind of a symptom of having a hyper star that even when you have it really dialed in it's not going to be perfect but i'm very happy with this the first prototype came out quite nice it had a really snug fit and so now i'm going to extend the height of this in this direction and i'm going to add a slight window for the filter drawer see how it goes so i went back and extended the 
um, dew shield that I designed earlier um, and I add a little window for the filter drawer hopefully this is big enough I'm gonna print this one overnight and uh, just see if it works if it's not what I want then I'll just print another one and keep trying out a couple more variations until I like what I get but I'm gonna try a slightly shorter dew shield than what you're used to on a normal telescope you can see it's a bit short but I think that's gonna be nice and gonna make my life a little bit easier this one is going to be done in seven and a half hours got a little ways to go and another part it done obviously this doesn't look perfect this is just a prototype but this is our new dew shield so let's see if we can get it off the print bed here there we go that came out looking pretty good so we'll go slap this on the telescope and see if it fits as you can see I had to do a filament change about part way through tried to use up every last bit of my old filament so very nice there we go and with the brim as well as the supports removed you can see this is what the final product will look like except this is in color instead of in black like I'm going to have the final one so it looks like the prototype was just a tad too small and it snapped here so I'm going to reprint the final version just a little bit larger and I also found that this drawer here that I made for myself was not nearly big enough and I uh, just didn't really have the right dimension so I'm going to increase that by about another inch and add another inch onto the height here so we can really have this be perfect. Went to make a final prototype and I knew that I was going to run out of filament about halfway through. Unfortunately I didn't have enough time and my system needed to rehome. So I had to pull this all the way off the printer and start from scratch. But I did fit this and I learned that this was actually just slightly too wide. Even though I scaled this up, I thought I was scaling it up by just enough, but it was actually too much. So I'm reprinting. Now this time in the final material, but I'm going to try a very comfortable middle ground for the size. And I think it's going to fit nice and snug. That's one of the things that comes down to when you're prototyping is that you're going to spend more filament than you would on a product that you know is going to work perfectly. That's kind of the price you pay. It's going to be a couple days worth of work and you're printing, you're designing, and you're filament, but overall you're going to have a part that's going to fit perfectly and does exactly what you need and you still probably saved a little bit more money. And after 14 hours we can see we finally have a completed dew shield. Uh, I've already started pulling it off the plate here. Oh, there it goes. Pops right off. Just gonna have to pull out those tree supports and fit it on. See how well it does. And slipping it on the telescope looks fantastic. I've got a filter drawer here that I can reach into. If I need to grab the filter out, no problem. I can extend this height if I want to, but I think what I'm really going to do is I'm going to print a cap that goes up to the top height here and closes this whole thing this whole thing off it holds everything quite nicely it's a very snug fit the cables come out of the top here and it came out looking very nice so i think that's going to do it for my hyperstar upgrades here that i've figured out with my 3d printer i'm excited to get a dust cap put on this thing as well as maybe some sort of bat knob mask although with my new focuser that i've put on here I have had zero problems focusing. My stars have been much sharper, and I've also figured out some tricks in my algorithms that I'm gonna be talking about in my next video, because even though I've put out like a bunch of videos already on this Hyperstar, I'm finding even more tricks and tips into how to improve this system, and it's gotten way better since my last videos that I put out on this. So I'm really excited to talk about those soon, and you guys are going to be really excited to see these pictures, because honestly, they're the best I've ever taken, and I can't wait to share them. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.